everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. This is going to be a little off program. This is Saturday. I'm filming this. I'm going to put it up on Sunday because I want you guys to have time to find good sparkling wine for New Year's. Now, I know a lot of you, that might be the only time you use sparkling wine is probably at a wedding, at New Year's, maybe Christmas. Uh, those are times that people look to sparkling wine. Now, of course, as wine geeks, we encourage you to look to sparkling wine all the time. My wife loves sparkling wine. She has it a lot. And so I'm in an environment where, you know, we do drink sparkling wine year round. But when you're celebrating New Year's, you maybe you have some friends over and everything, you don't necessarily want to spend a ton of money on that sparkling wine. Now, that being said, some of you might want that special wine when you're just two of you together. But we're going to focus on quality, inexpensive, sparkling wine. And the first place we're going to go, believe it or not, is Mexico. Guadalupe, the valley called Guadalupe. This is the Cheto Brut Sparkling Wine, a state bottled from Mexico. This rolls in at $13 and it is made from the Chardonnay grape. Let me show you the bottle there. <clears throat> now, many of you are going, Mexico? Why would you be get a sparkling wine from Mexico? Let me tell you guys. Let me tell you. And I will be having Patrick from Bezo Wine. So a little shout out to Patrick from Bezo Imports. He is bringing me Mexican wines and they are amazing. It's probably one of those hidden secrets in the world of wine. I mean, you know a lot of people know about it, but a lot of the, the average consumer doesn't realize that there are quality wines coming out of Mexico. So this is the Cheto Sparkling Wine Brut made from Chardonnay. Let's see what we get on the nose. So we'll get a little bit of an interesting uh, pineapple sort of apple component coming through. There's another smell that I just can't nail. You know, it's one of those times when you wish you had another person with you to just say, what are you smelling? And then they, they hit it. I love it when that happens. A little lemon coming through as well. Let's see what we get on the palate. Good bubbles. A little nuttiness coming through, which I like. Nice small bubbles. It foams just a little bit in the back of the mouth, but not too bad. I get just a, excuse me, tiny hit of yeast coming through. That nuttiness, a little bit of lemon. Nice uh, vibrancy on the palate. This is 13 bucks, guys. This is pretty good sparkling wine for $13. Now, $13, in my opinion, is a really good price point. You can buy two or three bottles, knock yourself out. It's funny, I tried to recommend this uh, this particular sparkling wine to a customer of mine, and she scoffed when I said it was from Mexico. Don't diss Mexican wines. They are coming out with some really powerful stuff. Uh, I hope to have that episode with uh, Patrick coming in 2020. I'm looking forward to that. Hey, by the way, I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Uh, we did here, you know, just a cup. My brother and my son came over and we had prime rib and really good wine and it was a great time. Just a touch of sweetness coming through, but solid, dry, crisp, good flavors. A little bit of yeast, a little bit of nuttiness, a little bit of lemon. All there. I like it. I'm going to go... B minus B on that one. Solid wine, Cheto, sparkling brut from, of all places, Mexico. Let's move on. Now we're going to go to a wine that many of you go to for inexpensive but quality wines, and that's Spain and Cava. Cava is probably one of the best deals in the world when it comes to sparkling wine. They do it in the method of champagne. They ferment and the, you know, they go through the whole process just like they do in Champagne. In fact, they have some of the same rules as Champagne does. Uh, they have to leave it in a bottle nine months before disgorging. All of that. And the price is ridiculous. This is the uh, Daibon 
Brut Reserve Cava from uh, Villafranca del Penedes, Barcelona, Spain. 11.5% alcohol, fermented in the bottle it says. $10 guys, 10 bucks. $10, crazy. This has always been one of my favorites in the past. Let's see what we get on the nose. So the grapes of, uh, of Cava are Macabeo, Perlata, and Zarello. And now they're allowed to use uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. But Macabeo is the main one. And the reason for that is that it's a late budding vine. So therefore it, it avoids the early frost of spring. So it makes sense. You know, this is a, this is a grape they can depend on to produce Cava. It doesn't necessarily have a lot of great flavors to it, but they use it because, for that very reason. It's very economical to use this grape. And then the Zarello evidently gives it the more of, a, of an earthiness to this wine, and then the Perlata adds more dimensions to it. But Macabeo is the main grape of Cava. Let's see what we get on the nose. Speaking of dusty, earthy, this has definitely dusty rocks on the nose. A little bit challenged, of course, it's really hard to get the full uh, uh, aromas out of a small glass like this, but, you know, most of you, you know, you're not going to sit there and smell it out of the glass anyway, I'm assuming. A little bit of an orange peel coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. <coughs> wow. Dusty rocks again. I like that element in a, in a champagne. That earthiness that we talked about with the Zorello grape comes through and that orange peel, slight orange peel coming through, small bubbles, nice and dry, not quite as crisp as the one from, uh, you know, linear as the one from Mexico, but still really good. $10, guys. I mean, I would break this out any day. Yeah, nice texture in the mouth. I don't get the yeast on this one, maybe just slightly. I love that dusty component, a little orange and lemon coming through. Uh, they have to leave it on the leaves nine months, just like in, uh, in Champagne, and it's only ten bucks. Solid, sparkling wine for a prayer, really, if you think about it. Uh, I would pour this any day, feel proud of it, and it would be a great celebratory uh, sparkling wine for New Year's. I'm going to go straight up B- minus on that one. C plus B-. Minus. B-B, minus B, C plus B-, minus. great grade for a wine that's only $10, and like I said, I'd be proud to serve this at my party. Let's move on. This is the... Uh, 2015, so this is the first vintage. These are both non-vintage. Or is this non-vintage? I believe it is. Non-vintage. So another rule that they have to follow in uh, Kava is it has to be under 13% alcohol and over 10. So it, a lot of rules are the same, and yet the price is so good. So this is the 2015 Blanquet uh, <coughs> Domos. <laughs> Blanquette de Lemieux Brut Cuvée Berlin. This rolls in at $13. 13 bucks. Great bottle. Classy bottle. Lemieux uh, is in, uh, near the Pyrenees Mountains in southern France. It's part of the Languedoc Roussillon region. Uh, it's actually near the Pyrenees, up a little bit higher. And it's away from the Mediter Mediterranean influence, so they can grow their grapes in, uh, you know, they in a cooler climate, which is good for sparkling wine. Now, the Cava area is really close to the, uh, to the ocean, so they do get that influence, but they don't here. And uh, Blanquet refers to the, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, it is the, um, uh, hmm, Mozac grape. So Mozac is the name of the grape, and that's what Blanquet refers to. It's a Mozac grape in Lemieux. They also blend it with Chenin Blanc and Chardonnay. And they really like their Chard. It's, it's very highly sought after there. 
they consider it some of the oldest vines, Chardonnay vines, in southern France. Okay? Pretty interesting fact. And uh, they, there's, you know, they can't substantiate this, but they feel like uh, sparkling wine was actually uh, uh, invented or created in Lemieux. You know, the history books don't have all of the facts, but that is the kind of word out there is that uh, sparkling wine came from Lemieux. Let's see what we get on the nose. Wow, very distinct on the nose. The most aromatic of the bunch. Lots of nuts, like filberts and walnuts and hazelnuts. A little bit of yeast coming through. I'm curious. Yeah, extremely nutty. I'm getting mostly hazelnut on the nose. A little bit of yeast coming through. And a slight hit of pear and apple. Let's see what we get on the palate. Very interesting sparkling wine. Real nutty up front. Then it goes really lean and dry and crisp and a little minerally. I like that. This is an interesting, I mean, $13, guys. 13 bucks. We're talking 13, 10, 13. Great values. A little bit of yeast, a little bit of bread dough, lots of nuts. You know, um, just imagine biting into a hazelnut or a, a filbert. It just reminds me of that a little bit. And then it finishes bone, bone dry. So if you're big into really, really dry champagne, a little citrus on the back end, you're going to love this wine. I love them all. I actually like them all. I'm going to go straight up B on this one. I think it's a very solid wine for $13. It would be a great celebratory wine, especially for somebody who might be a little bit of a bubble head kind of snob. They would like this wine. And don't tell them what you paid for it. Great package. Solid, sparkling wine. There you go. Three great values for your celebration of New Year's. I hope, I'm really looking forward to 2020. My next episode, episode, first one coming out in 2020, which will be this coming Friday, will be featuring wines from my winery of the year. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars. Bye.